In the 1970s, it was the big rush to create polyphonic synthesizers. Now, of course, we got away from fully polyphonic synthesizers like divide down synthesizers because it was more challenging and more expensive to articulate the notes so that it would play like other natural acoustic polyphonic instruments. So uh, what we did was we adopted an approach where um, we sacrificed amount of polyphonic notes for articulation of polyphonic notes. Um, Bob Moog actually suggested calling this multiphonic. Um, so be that as it may. Okay, so all of the big synthesizers, all of the big polyphonic synthesizers from the 70s and early 80s had two oscillators uh, per note, per voice. The thing that makes the Moog memory Moog so special well, there's a lot of things, but one of the major things is it is a three oscillator polyphonic synthesizer. You can play six notes at a time. So each of those six notes is going to have three oscillators happening on it for a total of 18 oscillators. It's ridiculous. It is brute force oscillator craziness. So that is the great thing to begin with about the Moog Memory Moog synthesizer. Let's start off with a sawtooth wave. This is one oscillator playing right now. We're only hearing the first oscillator. A wonderful sawtooth wave. It is a Curtis chip sawtooth wave, I'm to understand. These oscillators are Curtis chips, like the ones you would find in the Prophet 5. Uh, we have a very wide range. Here's the 16 foot setting, very low, and we can also bring it down an octave over here on the hand thing. <laughs> yes, that's my own term for the left hand controller, hand thing, okay. Very deep. Quite high. So that's our sawtooth wave. Let's move on to our square wave. It's a very brassy square wave. Not your hollow, warm, dark sort of square wave. Um, let's listen to the range. wide range and of course as with uh, most square waves you have the ability to set the pulse width all the way to a duty cycle of zero very nice let's listen to the other end of it great sounding square wave and we also have the ability to play a beautiful warm triangle. Quite low. Whoa. We can even go lower. Can't even hear that. Quite high, really amazing range. So that is awesome. Those are all great sounding waveforms. Uh, but we're not done because you may have noticed, the eagle eyed amongst you may have noticed every time I selected a wave, I had to turn the last wave off. And why is that? It's because you can actually mix and match the waveforms. Uh, of the polyphonic synthesizers I've played from the 70s and 80s, I've never seen this available. So in addition to this synthesizer having three oscillators, uh, you will also get the opportunity to mix and match waveforms in a single oscillator. So we can also have the sawtooth on. Wait, let's start off with the sawtooth. There's our sawtooth. What happens if we add a triangle? Instant increased low end. which in addition to some other things could uh, add to fatness. Uh, let's throw in the square. 
And you can change the pulse width of the square. So you really have the ability to not only, you know, most polyphonic synths from the 70s and 80s, all the big fancy ones, um, well, I guess the CS80 had the ability to mix its waveforms, but usually you had to select either a sawtooth or a square. That's just how it was. But with this, you can mix all three uh, within a single oscillator and you're basically engaging in uh, creating your own wave shapes. <laughs> really gorgeous and we've only been on a single oscillator before we move into the other oscillators uh i want to point out that in the mixer any uh setting you have above eight is going to clip and not in the ugly gross way but in the warm uh exciting mini mode sort of way It's very subtle, but it adds warmth, just like you would want it to. Now let's move on to another oscillator. All of the oscillators are the same, but of course, in the second and third oscillators, you have the ability to tune, which we'll talk about. But let's just hear another oscillator. Right off the bat, big, fat, richness, huge. That's only two oscillators. Uh, if we have it in the same frequency range. Really, really big. You have so many timbral options, it's stupid. It's just amazing. Uh, yeah. I, you can tell I like it. <laughs> so then, of course, you can start mixing and matching oscillator wave shapes. Of course, changing the octave, depending on your level setting, may not mean, oh, there's just an octave higher, but actually, you're starting to get into really interesting additive synthesis. Listen to how rich that is. I mean, that's incredibly rich. And we should talk about tuning. Let's talk about it right now. We have these frequency knobs here in oscillator two and oscillator three, and they're not just coarse on the bottom and fine on the top. They're actually vernier knobs. So when you turn the, the bottom knob, you're actually turn the top knob spins like crazy because your fine tune is on the top. And if you turn the fine tune on the top, you're actually very slowly turning the low knob. So this is a vernier knob and it makes tuning really quick and really nice. You're just there. So you can use this to add a bit of detune as if you don't already have enough incredible chorusing going on amongst all of these, what are we at, 12? Uh, analog oscillators going crazy. We don't even need chorus or even pulse width modulation really because this thing is so nuts. This is a huge amount of VCOs all beating richly against each other just like you would ever want. It's gorgeous, it's astounding. I love it. Okay, and uh, let's just throw in oscillator three while we're at it. Wait till you hear what this does. Let's put this up here. Listen to that, oh my God. Where have you ever heard a sound like that? I, I'm just blown away by it, I can't even believe it. That's 18 oscillators all playing these, these various notes we're listening to. That's three layers of oscillators per note with wave shapes mixed and matched. I mean, oh, ha. Huh. And 
And listen, listen to this here. Let's just do this. Okay, let's listen to three triangle waves. They have a certain brightness to them, right? Well, listen to this. What happened to our triangle waves, man? You've got three triangle waves. I just changed the octaves. What's happening? What's happening is additive synthesis. You're basically going in and creating, you're mixing and matching harmonics by switching the octave settings and you're generating uh, harmonic outcomes. You're, you're generating additive outcomes. <laughs> without even a filter. And you can bring these down and just listen. You're able to do actual filtering just using the mixer because this is additive. And really, when you're mixing and matching all of these wave shapes at different octaves, you are truly engaging in complex harmonic additive synthesis without ever leaving the oscillators. And that is something incredibly special. Madness. Okay, and we should also point out that you have keyboard control and uh, low frequency possibilities in oscillator three, which we'll address when we talk about uh, some of the other functionality. And let's not forget, they haven't left you high and dry without noise. I don't know what's generating this noise, if this is a Curtis chip sort of thing, but it is weird, gritty, dirty noise. But yes, that is the oscillator section. And I mean, think about just any combination of octaves and waveforms and mixer settings is going to generate a new sound. It is an incredibly powerful wave shape generator for an oscillator section. And the huge combinations of wave shapes and oscillators generates amazing outcomes.